Yes, sir. Do it six four five. Now we have corn. And uh, so, you yeah, guys you know it's now it's gen general kicking the general government meeting off at six oh five p.m. on uh, Tuesday, uh, March sixth. Here in the veterans room, uh, we now have a quorum. So uh, we're going to kick off with the uh, vote to approve the town council general government subcommittee meeting minutes of February twenty first. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I came in very late, yeah. Yeah, so I will abstain. I'm not going to pass if I abstain. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, it's got to be a form of the committee. Yeah. Oh, makes sense. I mean, if you don't mind me, I, I got my vote on them. I, uh, honestly, I don't have a problem. You were here. Have you read them? Yes. Do you have yeah. any conversation no. with them? No. No, okay. Can we have a joke? Can we have a motion or in a second? I'll make a minutes? Make motion. Okay. Any questions, comments no. on, the, on the minutes? No? All in favor? Number two is discuss the RFP for the sale of seven processes. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Um, as you guys both know, this is sort of a redrafting of an old RFP. Yep. Um, you'll see lines of the yellow, which are really timing issues for the most part. But the one big issue that was discussed, and me and the chairwoman had discussions about this a number of times, is the question of do we want to put a minimum value yes. on this property right. or not? And I left that blank for open for discussion. I'm more than happy to do that if, if the council members feel that that's something they want to do. Uh, as you recall, uh, you've got a letter, I believe is in your packet, from the appraisal company who is saying that they don't believe there's any value to the property. The reason for that is the high cost of rehabilitating mm -hmm. this particular property into a usable office space or uh, to put it in a situation where you can actually do something with this building. Um, so she's put it basically that there's no <coughs> value to this. Now, the reason this is before you, because we had talked about putting this building in sort of a freeze uh, and just setting it aside. We obviously set the building up, uh, and turned off all the heat, the electricity, yeah. and for cold storage. Mm -hmm. uh, but two different people, two different organizations have come to me uh, suggesting they might be interested in this particular building. Uh, and again, it really doesn't matter because the best proposal would win in the end, but they have said that they might be willing to actually bid on the proposal. And that is, as you know, is Center Hope being one and a canvas company, okay. a boat canvas company or canvas company might have some interest in using it just to put canvases on different items and, build, and put together canvases. I'm not sure that's a full use of the building, but at least they have an interest in the building. Okay. Center Hope believes uh, that in spite of the high cost of what did you guys know we had an evaluation done in this building? Um, I believe time bonded the evaluation and it you know, was in the millions of dollars in terms of getting this building up to speed. Mm -hmm. Center of Hope believes that they have their own construction people, that they can come in at a much lower price than what uh, time bond says it would cost to do that building because uh, they don't have to use prevailing wage. They can uh, use crews that make a lot less money than what we would have to do if it was a town owned building. Uh, so they see it as a possibility that this might be a building that they can use. Mm -hmm. They're actually looking at two buildings, this building and the old mill building um, on Mill Street, another one that, um, I forget his name, the Italian gentleman owned it and he basically put it out for auction and uh, um, Senator Hope actually won the auction but then kind of backed out. So they're looking at both buildings and they believe that they might purchase both buildings. So they have an interest in the building. Uh, I've updated this. RFP to clean it up to make it more consistent with today. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you'll see the one section I highlighted about price. Mm -hmm. um, my question or my concern is that if we put a price that's in it, a minimum price that's too high, we may not get any bidders on it. Um, I think the, the other opposite concern to that is if we don't put a price on it, maybe we get too low of a value for this building. Right? Mm -hmm. The question here really comes to what is the value to the town on this building? Um, the town, if it chooses just to put in cold storage and the building will continue to deteriorate and may eventually have to be torn down, and there's a hundreds of thousand dollar price tag on ripping that building if we ever have to get to that point. Um, or we can sell it for a low price and turn it around. Now, a good thing about Center Hope is they can turn around a lower price and they can get it functioning and maybe a nice building and the town can use it. The downside, <coughs> The downside, hello, gentlemen. Um, the downside to that is Center Hope is a non-taxable organization, so that's a negative issue because 
the town wouldn't generate any revenues right now. We don't know who would bid. In theory, a regular business could bid and it could be taxable. It's our hope you bid. And the, the option is we are supposed to pick the best proposal in this case. Right. So we don't necessarily have to take the highest price for this project. Right. We can take whatever we can recommend the best proposal and bring it forward. The reason this is before you is generally you guys don't vote to approve our fees, but the reason it's before you is because you guys have to do two things. The council has to be willing to sell this property. They have to really have an interest in doing that. And they have to have a will to sell us at some price, right? Okay. So if we don't work together on this project and figure it out, uh, we're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's here before you to, for a couple of reasons. One is I'm looking to see a town council in fact wants to put this back out for an RFP one. And two is, do you want to do it? You know, do you want to put some minimum price in? Because you're not going to sell it for less than a hundred or two hundred thousand, whatever it is. Then we're not going to sell it if it, if it comes in lower to that. So mm -hmm. the document has been presented to you guys. It's a follows all the state requirements uh, for procurement for this particular type of requirement for RFP. You'll see. Like other RFPs, there's a process to evaluate each proposal and to sort of score each proposal mm -hmm. for for uh, its worthiness and benefit to the town. And that's essentially where we are today. So, I mean, it's really kind of up to council what they want to do here. If you guys want to put in an amount, so be it. I, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I would do that because I'm the general procurement officer, so I would put that amount in. But it's pointless for me to put it in, not put it in, if you guys aren't going to vote for mm -hmm. selling it for some amount, right? So. You know, this is again something we needed to work together on. Okay. Just to clarify, so for you guys, we're on item number two. Give you the notice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Okay. So, a uh, number of things with some of the comments you've made. So, I was around for the May 4th, 2012 uh, proposal <laughs> when this building was put out back then for mm -hmm. 174000 as the minimum bid. Uh, unacceptable. Anything <coughs> below 174199 uh, And the building had much of the same issues as it has today. Now I realize the building is not going to draw that kind of money and we had looked at other opportunities, that the previous councils had looked at other opportunities for lesser amounts and we had no real problem with a lesser amount. You asked um, two things, you stated uh, you want to know if we even wanted to do this. Well, we've been asking you to get this done since last August. So I think that's an answer there. As far as the price, you asked, I know uh, Vice Chair Steves and myself in your office in the fall time, we talked about money, mm -hmm. and I said, well, what was the last proposal amount? Where is it? Get it out, which we never got it, but I, I've got it. Um, is that in your package? And not the old one. Uh, we've got the new one. And I asked, doesn't matter. I asked, uh, what was the last amount? I believe we had it on the oh, market for like 100000 or something or whatever, but it was 174 on this proposal, but I know that we were looking at proposals in the amount of, uh, of 100000 75 to 100000 And I mm -hmm. believe you and I spoke uh, and, and recommended to the manager that we put it out for something. Now, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we can't, we don't have to put the word unacceptable. We can, you know, the minimum is a minimum, but sometimes people put in other bids as we've seen done on other buildings before. Mm -hmm. And then at that time we can say, you know, this no, we're just not gonna do it for that or we are. Granted, we don't wanna tie our hands and, and, uh, and not have, uh, I mean, we need to be able to put this out there for some money. Last year, $75,000 went into windows that when I asked multiple counselors if they even knew about it, nobody seemed to know about how those, how Menard Glass was putting in beautiful green buildings and new doors. And I realized it went through CDBG, but certainly again, while we don't say yes or no to a proposal uh, in terms of the RFP going out, it behooves any manager to check in with the legislative body who has the right to sign that contract in the end. So the fact that windows were put in on a mothballed building, which was really scary because we had no insurance on that building and anybody could have vandalized all those windows and there goes taxpayer money for Massachusetts Alpha window. And uh, so that wasn't meant to be, but that happened like that. So very disturbed, finally out, finally we're gonna put this out there. And I understand Center Hope, love Center Hope, nice people. Uh, you know, do a good job. The awning company, great. Let's not let's not lowball. Let's put something out there. Put a number out there. Have seventy-five thousand. You got the windows going on. Put something out there. If people are serious, they're going to still give their proposal. And while we don't have to take the highest amount, it would certainly be in the interest of this community to take. If 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 it's a highest amount and a tax-paying industry. Uh, uh, 
a taxpaying proposal, then that's what we have to look out for as the taxpayers in the future. We need revenue in this town. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. We're about to talk about a lot of other issues that require revenue in the next few meetings that we have, not to mention the budget. So let's not, you know, uh, kick ourselves and, and put it out there free, out there. Here, just, just tell me, you want to give me $10 or a dollar because you're going to spend uh, 100000 or 200 It's a business. Center Hope knows it's a business. The Ana people know it's a business. Whether you're cold storaging, whether you do nothing with it, just look at it in the pretty green windows. But I owe it to the taxpayers to get as much money for this building as any other, anything else. We have things we have to spend this money on. So I, I request that we put it out there for... I would have looked at half of what we had before, but I'm willing to go with like the windows or something. I think we need to put it out there for something that's realistic. And, and that's fine. My question is- Because there's a lot of things you can do uh, with that building, so. And it could be. So my question is though, is that going to be a threshold? Would we still consider any offers below the minimum or is it a minimum we won't even consider an offer that is below the minimum? Because that, cause that's the way it would, we, we have to mm -hmm. care about we write it. Mm -hmm. Because if, if 70,000 minute in minimum, we're saying we're not even gonna talk to anybody over offers less than 70, mm -hmm. we can't even do that. Right. So my question is, whatever the number is, mm -hmm. is that a threshold that says we won't sell it for any less than that amount? That, that's what I'm trying to understand. Right, and I'm only one vote, and mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. looking for input for the others as to what they feel this building should go out there for. Mark. Uh, Mr. Chair, I apologize, I walked in a little late okay. and probably it's already been answered, but what is our investment in uh, this property so far? So, so here's the situation, Mark, to kind of go back in history. The building was put out for an RFP a number of years ago. Do you, do you remember what year? May 4th, 2012. 2012. And there was one company that wanted to buy it, and then they found out when the cost of trying to refix of the building was just too high, and they decided not to move forward. At that time, there was an appraisal done by the town, and I think the appraisal was about 200 grand that was put on the building. Since then, we had a study, a, a, I guess it's a study from uh, Time Bond that went in and analyzed the whole building and said what it would cost to put this building back to. Uh, my office. apologies, Mr. Tom, Time Bond, all said and done. What so, do we have invested so, so, as a dollar figure? So I'm wondering. Well, the building is, 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 I don't know that you could even call it investment because it's a building we've owned for years and yeah, years and years. It's pretty much been written off at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, there's probably no value in terms of the dollars for the building. It's something we've owned for years. It's right? something you want to dump. Yeah, it's something <laughs> we want to dump. So the, the issue is, in order to bring it up to today's standards, meet code and everything else, it's well over $2 million. No, that's a, that is not an accurate, no, that is to municipal building standards. Right. Let's mm -hmm. be accurate about this. That's municipal building standards. That's, if you write the proposal, you would laugh at it, Mark, knowing what you know about this. I'm sorry, there's a difference between bringing up to code and municipal building standards? It's not bringing up to code. There are other things you can do. If that were the case, then Center of Hope couldn't bring it up to code for less than $2 million. Well, That's your statement. Right. Well, the reason that is because they, we have to, if we were going to bring up the code, we would have to Municipal up the building, wage. union, union wages, municipal, you know, right. elevator, all kinds of stuff. You right. know so, so anyway, the, the information we got from time bond in terms of what they felt to bring it up to municipal standards was well over $2 million. So, the town doesn't ever really have a need for the building. So the question is, we want to put it on the market, or the other part of it is, do we want to rip down the building and just get rid of it? Because it's a, it's a non kind of functional building. The cost of ripping it down would be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, it should be a shame, I think. I, I agree with you, truthfully. So, mm -hmm. but if the town doesn't sell it, it just sits there and continues to deteriorate, and then at some point, the town will have to make a decision to tear it down or not, right? So what this is, is we want to put it back out in the market and see if there's any company, center whole nonprofit one that would want to buy that. And then the question is, what's the value? The, the appraisal is saying, the appraiser is saying, after looking at the information put out by time bond and looking at the building, re-examining it, they feel that there's no value in the building because of the high cost of either rehabilitating it or in ripping it down. So it's before us now to say, okay, we want to put out and see if anybody's interested in this building. And the question at hand, and what Denise is talking about, is we can set a minimum purchase price for this building. We could say uh, we're not going to accept any offers under 80 grand, which is what she's talking about with the CDBG funds, right? Or we can not put anything in and say we'll consider any offer. So that's the debate. And I think Denise is asking other counselors, do you want to put a minimum on this for some amount? Do you just want to put it out for bid and see what people offer? How do you want to handle it from here is the question. Have they exhausted our... Um I forget the name of the young lady. I've only met her once or twice. Um, <coughs> that goes and chases uh, 
businesses. Economic development. Oh, yeah. Rosemary? Yeah. Rosemary? Yeah, so Rosemary has been... Rosemary in, exhausted yeah. her... Uh, so Rosemary's been involved with this, and she's the one that actually worked with the appraiser and everything else to basically say there's no value to this. Rosemary can't tell you, Rosemary's been approached by Center Hope and by this canvas company as well that have an interest in it, right? But she can't do anything because it has to follow this request for proposal process, has to be put out in the market. So we don't even know for sure that they will actually bid. But they have said there's interest because we had decided last year to mothball this and not do it. Now, because they've shown interest in this, we've decided, okay, if there is an interest in us, maybe we should put it back as an RP and see if there's any real interest or not. So that's that's what we're, we're trying so to do now. So your real question to this committee is, what's the bottom number? Well, what's, what do you want to put a minimum threshold on it? Do we definitely want to sell it? And do you want to put a minimum dollar on this? Or, or do you just want to put it out for the best price? Thank you. It seems to me this has been a thorn in Southbridge's side for a long time. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting at a joint school committee meeting discussing this when Kevin Pecos was around and the school wanted to use it and mm -hmm. we can't sell it, we can't do this, we can't do What if we, would it be in the best interest of the town just to put it out to bid in hopes that somebody would buy it and, you know, I mean, you don't want to sell it for like ten or twenty thousand dollars. You want to try to get a little bit more, of course, right? But I mean, if somebody comes in and buys it and they refurbish it and they are generating <coughs> revenue for our town, that would benefit in the long run mm -hmm. our community. I know we. It's a shame that seventy-five thousand dollars worth windows went into the uh, an abandoned building that you claim that well we might tear down. Um, I don't know who allowed that to happen or why we didn't know about it. But I, I, I think that we should maybe, I don't know, if, if you're going to do, like, if you're going to put a minimum on it, maybe, like, put a minimum of, like, 50, 50, 50 yeah, 50, 60,000 dollars. You know, uh, okay, on it just to get, to get something. We need to get to, some to money. To get to get something. Yeah, exactly. It, because in if you're looking for out in the future, it's eventually it's going to bring in some money for the town. We don't want to tear it down and you know have another vacant lot. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, uh, um, back to the same issue. Um, let's say it was sold for a dollar. <laughs> no, let's say we're sold for a while. It's somebody that's going to go in there and make the investment because there is a substantial investment to be made to put that building, I don't care what the usage is, um, to um, to be functional, be it residential or uh, which I don't see, but uh, commercially certainly. Um, and it generates uh, a, a tax investment for the town. Why not? And whose discretion is that? I think is my question. That to me, sure so, you want to. Yeah. No. Okay. You so, if you sell it for a dollar to a nonprofit, there's no tax generated. If you sell it to a dollar to somebody else, then there's tax generated based on value. You know, so then you have to evaluate the building again. So. Can we uh, can we include a um, a pilot tax deal if it ends, ends up being a nonprofit? You would have to write something up, and, and they would have to agree to that. Well, but we've we've talked about that before with other nonprofits, you know, well, really hospital and stuff. Well, and I know that, but but it, it, yeah. we just keep hovering around the uh, if we want to do it, when we want to do it. I'm not so sure we should use those terms anymore at this meeting because we have been asking to sell this building for, or try to sell, attempt to sell, put something out, and at least say, hey, we're open for business. Sell the building for like two years now, easy, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, so the town has obviously failed in that regard. Mm -hmm. so, so can we just do it already? Who would negotiate and decide we're not going to get a bum in here that's going to take... The proposals will come in and the, the council decides who sells the property if we the sell the property. Yeah. But you don't want someone to sue you if you if they meet all the requirements and then we don't take any... You, know, you don't want them to be mad at us. Because like, that would be very bad faith. We have to act in good faith too. Right. Okay. So so couple issues to that. And, it's absolutely true. At the end of the day, the council will vote to decide if they want to sell this property. And, and this, this <coughs> has language in it that says the town has a right to reject any offer. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to approve any offer if it doesn't come in. The town clearly has that right, and it happens all over the state. Um, there's merit to your comments that 
you know, if you sold it for a dollar, we shouldn't laugh about that because if you sell it for a dollar and it saves you hundreds of thousands of dollars of ripping down the building, that may be a good a good deal for the town. True. The the and brings commerce into the right. town. The Denise is absolutely correct though, and that's why I put out the issue of Center of Hope, right? The good thing about a center of hope is that the building gets revamped and reused. So it you know maybe it creates jobs and there's life in the building from a building that essentially is blighted. Okay. The building has been blighted for years, it's been sitting there essentially rotting. And a center of hope still brings value because now you take a dead building and you regenerate the life. The downside is there's no tax benefit to that, right? Because they don't they're not a tax paying entity. It's better to have a commercial operation come in and redo that building. Because then not only do you get the refurbished building and the life, you also get the tax dollars. So, you know, one of the things what would happen is I usually when you do an RFP and you'll see in this document there's criteria to select a best proposal. So I would put together a team and it would probably be Karen and Heather and Rosemary and we would have a team and we would evaluate the proposals and we would make a recommendation to town council what proposals we thought were better. And you'll see by the criteria we established it, we would give more points to somebody who was a business who wanted to buy the building and create life than we would for a nonprofit because of the taxable thing. We could give more value to somebody that would pay a higher dollar amount than somebody who would pay a lower dollar amount. But maybe you want to offer a high dollar amount, but you want to be a non-taxable company, right? We might take a lower person who bid lower for the property if they were taxable because over the long run we get more money. So that's part of the evaluation and the recommendation we would bring to town council and you guys hopefully would like our recommendation, would tell you why we made the recommendation and then you guys essentially would vote to make the deal. We're on the same page. Right. Absolutely. So that's how it would work. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Not a heck of a lot to add here. It makes perfect sense, been through the RFP. I'm in agreement with setting a floor. I think we should just establish what that floor should be, mm -hmm. right. make the motion, send it to council and let's get this moving. Because mm -hmm. you're right, we've been talking about this for years. Nothing happened in 2012 or whenever it was. Let's get it done and move on. So I'm okay with fifty thousand dollars if that's what consensus here is tonight. And that I don't know that. I'd rather see more, but quite frankly, I think we have to be realistic with our expectations for this property based on the evaluations and the appraisals that we've seen recently of zero dollars for value. Yeah. Now, truthfully, this this doesn't have to go to the council. But the reason it's here is because I wanted to hear what you guys want. Because eventually, it is going to go to the council. I need to, to know what you're going to do. So I'm looking for a vote to essentially recommend mm -hmm. to you know recommend me to put in a floor of 50 grand. I'm going to put in whatever floor you guys want. That's what mm -hmm. it amounts to. But I wanted to know that I had your support for this concept because it'd be a waste of my time to bring the council without it, right? Well, so what I'm going to do is if you guys make the vote to uh, recommend it a floor of 50,000, let's put in this. I'll put it in. We'll change the dates and we'll put it out in the street and see what proposals come in. At the end of the day, it's going to come to council because the vote that's going to come to council is the vote to sell the property or not. That's the vote that will come to council. So. I'm sorry. Okay. Nothing that comes out of here tonight can be voted on legally. I mean. Well, that's why there, there really isn't an RFP is by state law. Being whoever the town manager is is the chief procurement no, officer. No, so, I get it. But so you're saying if we not, agree, it, yeah. if we agree, it would be like a support it's vote a, upstairs. It's if we chose to put it on, yeah. it would be a vote to support the the um, execution of the RFP uh, for a minimum bid of 50,000. Yeah, we exactly. could say something right. like that on right. council if you feel comfortable yeah. so that we would know if right. other councilors are happy with that money as well. Yeah. Granted, there are five of us here tonight, yeah. but yeah. certainly if, that's an easy vote. And and that's an easy to, agenda item. And if you want to do that, I'll hold putting this on the street until after council no, just goes be just, to, just to be totally comfortable. I, well, with I it think it should wait until the full council hears it. Like, yeah, no. I, I think we should because be again, totally you know, yeah. you do it. You come back, and somebody says, "Well, where'd that number come yeah. from?" If one vote switches from tonight, we're in trouble, right? So we need to. And have I'm not full voting tonight. Council. Mark's not voting tonight. Oh, yeah. so ultimately, it's so I'm good with that. I think if you want to move it as a vote to recommend the town count to the town manager the, to put yeah. or support the town manager's position to put in a floor of fifty thousand mm dollars, -hmm. I'm good with that. And it's really, it's just really us working together on this so that we come to a successful conclusion. That's all. Mm -hmm. So was the agenda item corrected because it says recommend to council? Um, let me just see what she wrote for Denise. Or for Motion to recommend to council. So you're going to, well, it, does, well, it just says discuss. It does, to there's council, no, so. yeah, you're going to recommend it. Recommend but with a, so make your motion to include whatever you want it to be. That, that's not yeah. really a motion. And motion to recommend to council. Is this was yeah. on the agenda for discussion. Your choice of motion. Right. Entertain any motions that come out is usually what we say. Fine. And I'll, I'll move to, if you'll entertain it, I'll move to recommend uh, that we set a floor price of fifty thousand dollars for the sale of seventy Foster Street and recommend to council for support, not ratification. Okay. Great. 
We'll make sure it's proper upstairs. Second. Any last comments, questions? Anybody in the audience have any concerns, questions about this? Are you all okay with the word floor, not threshold? Because in the auto industry, minimum. it's a floor. Minimum. 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 Everyone knows what it means. Floor. Yeah, we know floor. Okay. So, just understand that, I, I was clear, so I'm clear on this, I just want to make sure. So, any offer under 50000 we're not going to consider. That's the intent that, of the that's discussion. That's the intent. I just want to make sure, okay. make sure I know the intent. Okay. That's the intent. So hopefully you haven't gone out and had discussions had of lower discussion numbers with anybody else from no. what I hear out there. I made Please. a promise to sell it for $2. <laughs> so just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Right. Give away the store. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. okay. Item number three is discuss possible action regarding airport apron project, including 5% match obligation of approximately 80 grand, which from our figures, I think is actually lower than that. Let me explain that as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, in, right? so let me kind of explain and Ryan can chime in. I got a call last week from the state and, and uh, on the call was um, John from, what's John's last name? Um, uh, Henry. Tom Mahoney. John, oh, John, John, Henry, John Henry and, and Tom Mahoney from the state and the people up and they called up and they said, listen, uh, the state of Massachusetts has some extra money in a pavement account that's used to pave sections of airports. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking for essentially a shovel ready project, a project ready to go to pave. Uh, and, and the project we think is great is at the apron at your airport. So we're willing to put up over a million, I think it's over a million two, I think it's the million, exact number. Million three. A million three. We're willing to put up a million three of state funds to do, uh, to re completely redo your apron. Now, it's interesting because usually they use federal money to do this and there's some state money, but mostly federal money to do this. But because they have this extra state money hanging around, they kind of have to spend it before June 30th of this year, right? So they've decided that Southbridge is a good project to do this. <coughs> It requires a 5% match from the town. Now, the number is an estimate. That million three is an estimate. They're not sure exactly what the cost. So the 5% is somewhere around $70,000. The reason I put $80,000 here because after they do the appraisal and do everything, uh, it could be higher. So I wanted to have a little bit of leeway in here to be able to cover it because we have to do a 5% match no matter what that amount is, right? So that's why I put 80 grand in here. If this is this money is what we did is me and Karen discussed and said where do we get 80 grand on this short notice and the reality is we're going to have to use free cash that has been authorized by the state for this year um, but we felt in order to get a million three in state dollars this was a really good investment to do this uh, and, and we had a long discussion and I called the niece and said to, to the niece and said you know this is a potential he's going to call me on Monday and let me know if they if they're actually going to go forward on this. And they did. And they called me and said, "Yes, we agreed that we are going to do this project." So I called Denise, and she was kind enough to see to it. It got on this agenda tonight for this purpose. In the meantime, um, they also said to me at that meeting that um, there's a fencing project that we had planned. This, by the way, this this apron was 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 proposed for uh, 2023. So it's being moved way up in terms of doing it, right? Could I add to that? Sure. One thing that's really interesting to note is that this fence project <coughs> is going to cost four years worth of FAA contributions yep. to get done. I'm not the fence part, excuse me, the apron project. Right, right. And now because it's not FAA money, which gives us 150,000 a year for right. each year to, to do other upgrades, because it's not FAA money, it's state money, that FAA money is still in play for the next four years. So we no longer go, well, we gotta wait till 2023 and save up all our money. Now it's being paid for with the exception of 5% in full and done immediately versus waiting. The apron is again, if you don't know the tie down areas and all that sort of, we did that fix, unfortunately, now we get the whole project done. Kind of, you never know what's gonna happen with the state, but that's an important area. Um, Obviously, at the airport. Yeah, so, I, I had a question about. Let me two finish this. Okay. Sorry, so I just wanted to add that. No, I appreciate it. So you're right on target, and I, I wasn't even thinking of that. So that's. Yeah. I, well, I it's good it to know. The the second part of it is they also have a fence project that was proposed for a couple of years down the road, and they want to do that now too as well. That's a hundred percent reimbursed, or hundred percent paid for by the state grant. Mm -hmm. So. They're talking about doing that as well it's shortly. 150,000. So 150 grand in a fence they're going to put up. So these two great, this was like really great news for us. 
and I, I had you know as much as we have a lot of really needs that Which we're going to have to well do. Which is well needed. Yeah, it's really needed. You know, this was not, frankly, yeah, it would have been know. my priority to be on the capital budget, but because it's this huge amount of state funds, you can't say no to this. It'd be mm -hmm. crazy. So that's why, you know, the airport, we, you know, uh, the airport commissioner um, sent you some documents to show you exactly where the fence was and the, and the apron was. So you should have got that in your pack. I actually sent it to you email because I just got it. Ron had sent it to me and I sent it out to you email. So. The bottom line on this is we think this is a great opportunity to get a lot of state money to fix a town resource and that, again, we're trying to make this airport grow and be something. Ron, you want to add anything before we go back yeah, to Yeah, if I could go back a little bit, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, when that apron was built, it was when the uh, landfill uh, began. They took all the scrap and it's all uh, clay mm -hmm. and they, they built that apron with that. So huh. there's no drainage. Uh, the drainage that there is not adequate, mm -hmm. and that's the reason that everything is, is breaking up, cracking, and there's always water there. So uh, if we get a rainstorm or you get uh, snow that melts, immediately it turns to ice. And as a matter of fact, I was with the engineers this morning, the whole morning, and uh, we actually discovered that there's a little hump under there beginning. <coughs> So we don't know if that's all water under there. We don't know what's under there. Um, uh, last fall, the Secretary of Transportation was here to get an update on tornado damage. And at that same time, MassDOT people were here. Um, there were a couple of you councils were there. And uh, Stantec Engineering was there. And they, they spoke with MassDOT at that time. We took a walk out there, mm -hmm. and the director of the aeronautics division said, Dr. Uh, Jeff DiCarlo, um, said, turned to me and he said, Ron, I've never seen an apron in such poor condition. And I think that's why that rather than give other people money, they're giving us the money. Mm -hmm. Because I've also got a comment about how myself and the commission work to try to get that airport back into a good condition we work hard at it, mm -hmm. and, it and it shows and uh, they said they would rather give us the money to give other people to just stand there with you mm -hmm. so. okay. um, before you go, i did have a question i was going to ask a second ago mm -hmm. um in the email chain that was sent mark referring to this particular project i, I actually i was hoping that Yvonne would print it up um, uh, I think it was Lenny. You, you commented. I'm going to clarify something with you. That's um, not Lenny. I'm sorry. Not Lenny's not here. Lenny's not here. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Ron's here for okay, Lenny. Maybe you can ask. Yeah. 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 But, 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 okay. Um, I don't know. You might know if you saw the chain of the chain of emails about yeah. it. Lenny sent around. And he, he mentioned he mentioned the issue that that Denise just mentioned a second ago about about us being able to um, not we wouldn't have to use for, uh, the FAA money. Right. I was I just wanted to clarify because the way it was the email was phrased, I was a little confused whether or not. It meant that we would not not be able to use four years of FAA money because essentially that was going into the project anyway, or it was freeing up four years so that we could use it for something else. Because it seemed up. to say both. It's freeing it up. That was the freeze up. Yeah. Yeah. Freeze up. Yeah. Freeze up the four. Yeah. yeah sure. His comment was the FAA share would be by us not using an FAA okay. airport improvement. Exactly. That's, exactly. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. That, that that implied to me that implied that the FAA share was going in. That was going the FAA share that was going into the project. No, it's not. That's the way I read it. Yeah. yeah. But so so that's so we still can use that for other stuff. Absolutely. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna say I think you can it's just really quick. quick. Yeah. No, that's okay. So I just have a comment about the The um, the money in the grant would cover the fence you said too, no, as well no, as the. No, it's two separate, separate grants. No, that's it's a separate. Oh, it's a separate. Grant. There's one for the apron and a separate one for the fence. The fence one's on the fifty grand. Yeah. The one for the apron's a million three-ish. Right. Okay. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Okay. So I have a question. Um, yep. Maybe Ron, you would know this because this came to. So I, I know we're looking for up to uh, five percent, up to eighty thousand. However, it was reported to me that um, in the airport generally doesn't make money. We know that, but over the last six months, your enterprise fund has actually increased some. So I would like to see um, Karen do a report, an up-to-date report on that, and potentially whether we could get you know ten, fifty, maybe we could get some money out of that. That go that could go towards this project as sort of a, a goodwill gesture because if we're going to take more money out of the town, 
uh, free cash, then why not uh, use a little bit of the airport money? That was recommended by airport person. So. That makes sense. That, that's a good idea. Yeah. What's wrong? So, Denise, I, if I recall a number, or maybe Ryan, you could help me with the number because I, I, I've seen it like a week or so ago. I seem to recall that there was an increase in revenues for the budget for the airport. There was something like 15000 more in revenues than the expenses, is what I think it came to. So, yep. there's a little bit of money there, Denise, but not much, is what the answer is. Well, I would still like to see, and I'd like to know if there's any kind of way that we can take a little bit of money. Yep. Um, and put it towards this project because it is an airport <coughs> project. We've done the fuel farm for you. We did the improvements last time. We made, you know, we did the, the matching stuff, and I'm all for it. Even mm -hmm. if we don't come up with a little bit of money, yeah. but it'd be nice as an in-kind. So we bought done. stuff last year. We fixed the diner. We did all that stuff again last year at Capital too. So I just want to. Um, some people aren't as passionate mm -hmm. about, um, you know, retaining that asset. Mm -hmm. So, so but, that that report is done. I'll be able to send it to you. Right. I've seen it. So okay. Any other questions? Oh, um, well, if you're talking about the, not that it's the agenda item, but the fence situation. Yeah. I mean, the fence is a full grant fence of $150,000, a uh, full, full like pay 100% 100 of 150000 towards mm -hmm. the 1100 or more feet, depending on the proposal. But that's a state bid process, my understanding. Yep. And um, it's, it granted would probably need to take the grant, but I saw that I printed off that proposal. You have to have that in by March 9th. Yeah. So you guys have to move forward with that regardless. It should be already we done. We then should have taken care of it. Okay, good, good. Because yeah. I just, I saw that. I printed off the... Um, yeah, we have a special form that, that we have to in. submit. Yeah, I saw the right. form. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. So I think that that's great. That's fantastic. Because I know that was another one of those projects that was slated for next year. I think that 2019. Was, uh, 2020. 2020, okay. Yeah. So... Now, uh, I spent the whole morning this morning with uh, Stantec, mm -hmm. and we walked most of the line and drove around the outside because all the gates are, are, are falling. They need Do you have a number of gates? Do you know how many gates are? Pardon? Do you know how many? I'm just curious. The number of gates? Yeah. Do you have any idea? There's probably eight or nine. That many? Yeah. What do you got? I Goes, do I hear six? I count six. <laughs> okay. Just no, curious. it is more than six. It probably is, but just yeah. There's eight or nine. I, okay. I okay. Doubles or singles? Okay. All the hardware is all wore out and broken. So okay. the, the gates are all right, right, right. Okay, and then curious. we have four holes in the fence that need replaced. Mm -hmm. So yep. we're hoping there's enough money in there mm -hmm. that gates. we can uh, 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 repair all those gates too. Good. There's also two gates that they don't even know about that are in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, one is completely gone. The other one is there, but can be repaired. Right, mm -hmm. right. But so that's got to go out to state, but that's not a bid that you guys put out. Nothing that's the we state. Do, no. The state goes mm -hmm. there. The state does it all. And so somebody does a proposal. Right. Okay. Just I'm making sure. I'm yep. assuming as far as those gates go, you end up putting up a, an actual gate, say, on that, on that dirt road that goes over toward the la where the landfill is, the old, is it that old um, break, um, Where road? the water line comes in? Um, that, mm -hmm. that general idea, yeah. There's there going to be a gate, gate there. Because yeah. I know you can and get there. And there is none right now. Uh, and then it's going to be a new one put up where the sewer line comes through. Right, right. And then probably 40 or 50 feet west of that gate, uh, there is an existing gate that's open that's not functional. Okay. So a lot of them just need to repair. <coughs> but there will be uh, probably one, two, maybe three new ones. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, though, Ron, you're looking for a motion to appropriate up to eighty thousand dollars from the free cash for the five percent obligation for the Mass DOT rebuild, uh, airport apron rebuild project. Exactly. Something correct. like that. Yeah, that's exactly perfectly. I'm right. not on this committee. That's, but that's a perfect word. Yeah. I thought about when it. When do when will we know how much we actually need? So, so I, I don't know when they're going to actually do a more detailed. I mean, they have to develop. Do they have to develop design documents for this run? Yeah, that's what they're doing right so, now. So, so what they do is like a lot of other projects, they do a detailed design document, and then they get even a better estimate from that, and then they got to put out the bid. So you're not going to know until it actually goes out the bid, Gus. Okay. That's all, when you would know the dollar amount. All that's work has, the, has to be completed by June 30th. Okay, so that, we'll know by then. So that, we'll know for the next quick. cycle. Yeah, that's why the 80 grand needs to be there because so I don't know if the mm -hmm. detailed okay. design and the actual bid will be higher or not. So we need to have a little bit of in case it comes out more than we thought. Okay. Thank you. Before you make I mean, the in theory, you should come back more than 80. Yeah. I'd have to come back Absolutely. and ask for more if it did. Yeah. Okay. You have to go out to bid on that? What's that? We have to go out to bid on this? They're going to Or they bid on this too. Do they take care of the bidding on this or do you? 
who on, 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 the on this project, the apron project, yeah. who but has to solicit for bids? Do we do it as a DOT? They're doing that too. Okay. Do I'm, just, I'm just, yeah. Yep. Because, well, just, <coughs> yep. That's good. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick. Thanks. Where we are. Uh, through you to, to Ron, uh, town manager. Just a quick question because I haven't asked in a while, but free cash got recertified. What amount do we have available now? Well, the, the new free cash certification is a little over a million three. Okay. okay. So that's one of the things that I'll be working on as soon as tomorrow. So I've been developing a new, again, it's a little different off the topic, but we develop a new capital improvement plan. So now we got to plug in that million three into the new capital plan for this year to mm -hmm. see what, you know, and I've got to decide what things that I'm going to be recommending for funding. So that's that's my, literally I'm going to be working on that tomorrow. Right on. I attended that meeting back in October, whenever it was. Uh, that new facility, the new administration building is fantastic. I'm glad the state invested. I think yeah. this is a no-brainer, especially given minimal 5% match. So I think we got to do it. Okay, so do we have yep. a motion then? Yes. Any? Let's make a motion to recommend to council to appropriate up to $80,000 from free cash to meet our 5% obligation for Mass DOT. Airport apron. Um, airport apron, airport apron, rebuild Rebe project. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll make you sure did we'll good, Frank. Yeah. She did it fast. She did, well, well, you I, did I pretty good. Scribble. Yeah, it was a second motion that I made at home. Oh, you read it. Okay. I wanted ready. to be. I wanted to be like prepared in case. Like, yeah, there's no fine. motion on there. We didn't know because at the time you asked to put it on, we didn't know if we were going to get it, right. and now you got it. That all happened in days. Yeah, so. the motion oh. is fine. So should we, should we include reference to the uh, to the grant itself? You don't have to. It's, it's for the apron. So you by identifying the apron, that's the project. So, okay. can I have a second? I second to that. Okay. Sorry, you didn't hear me. Okay. All in favor? Well, all in favor? <laughs> all, any further questions? Or anybody? No. no. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. All right. Go Peace forth. Thank Thanks, you. Ron. And, and by the way, just so people know, go forth and build. We're getting cool, looking cool forward. air on us, and that was the comment that. We just shared, so yeah. if there's a way to maybe like, adjust it, it feels like the air conditioners on. Wait, we're just, always too hot now. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Actually, they, this room was so hot Today I'm that Joel pump. adjusted Go it to it. pull it down. So I think he just pushed the button. Oh. I've never done it. I made it push the button down. But not too high up. Put your coat on. Every time I come in here, I see it. Okay. So we are at item number four. Continue discussion on military pay issues and entertain a motion to recommend. Don't let Council of Steve touch that. No, there's heat. I haven't touched it at all. I haven't even looked in there. That feels like AC. I can't The AC was on because the heat's always on. That's the problem. Yeah, it is. It's usually like 90 degrees in there. Okay. okay. Okay, so item number four continue discussion of military pay issue and entertain a motion to recommend to Council. I'm just a couple of questions because I wasn't here when you guys kind of right. put this together. So I'm just just so I understand a couple of things here, and I'm trying to. Okay. So A, if you go down halfway through the sheet, it says the difference between the gross paid military aid and that of his or her extraordinary room number for in that number. Remuneration. Remuneration. Uh, remuneration of the base pay of the town says for a period of not to exceed one year. So if a, if a, if one, let's say a fireman, for example, goes in the military and they're there longer than one year, do they only get the difference for the one year? So okay, so if, uh, if I could recap for these guys, because this looks way different than what we talked about, right. and then you'll get, I think, all your answers. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you'll notice you've got a proposed version, and what it consisted of, it was supposed to have a little line there that said, new new language but i think you might figure it out in our existing uh document that we have under non-collective bargaining unit employees personal rules and regs the entire first section is already there it's a bit wordy and strange compared to other communities but we didn't look at that one that was done when when some of these regs came in place and and so beyond that the part that says notwithstanding the provisions of section 59 of chapter 33 of mass general laws basically that means regardless of irregardless of whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a way to, as we talked about, we can adopt Chapter 33, Mass General Laws, Section 59 in its entirety. And we had some problems with that last time, as you recall, because it seemed very oddly laid out and, oh, referred to July 16th vote of 2016, and that changed the language. And so people said, what are we really voting on? And we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So research provided us with a really great example from Revere Mass and a few other examples, and to which I then provided to Kim. I went to HR with the Revere's product and said, what do you think of this to go with what we have? And she went through, she added Southbridge in there, she changed up just a couple little things and sent it back and said, what do you think? 
and I said, I think we've got a product that we could bring to council and could adapt to our current uh, current situation without voting in the entire Mass General Law deal. Now, could it be tweaked? Can we change it? So your question is one of those questions that have come up from others. Okay. The first part of that would be, is it one year? Um, we did discuss it the last time. Deployments can be 12 months, can be 18 months. Seems to be longer at times. I know from own personal experience with my son-in-law, he had numerous 18-month deployments. That is something that we can tweak. That is something we can discuss. That's why you get this information prior to coming here. If there are questions, I know the fire department has had some questions on some of these items. So um, that's one, and I don't know what your other questions are, but going down, something that has come up is um, the active duty. We discussed that a little bit. Their definition of active duty is defined as being deployed for military duty for a minimum period of nine months and out of the continent of the United States, including its territories, Hawaii and Alaska. So, that's just because it's Revere's policy, and maybe somebody else's, mm -hmm. is that what we want to define active, uh, active duty as. So again, something to think about, the, the fire department has voiced some concern as to whether or not, uh, what if they're deployed in the U.S. Um, and exist, uh, an example was brought that somebody was actually deployed out of the country, came back and was rerouted to uh, a couple of months in the U.S., or another month in the U.S. for an active situation. My belief was he was deployed and we didn't know he got stuck in Katrina for a month, we would have been continued to, until he got back here. I don't think that's a situation we'll get most of, but I think, is it out or is it in? Um, we know the Commonwealth is a states of emergency are not covered, as in the top section, so that's, it's not about being deployed in Massachusetts as an active duty, it's about being deployed somewhere. How do we want to define it for our town and for our um, uh, benefit or for our military so benefit. Can I? Okay. Yeah, yeah, interrupt any time. Yeah. Yeah. So things that came for up active duty, to, and it's usually the National Guard that's deployed for active duty in the United States, not the reserves, right? You're looking at the member to read the beginning, who is a member of an armed force reserve or National Guard unit called to act right, okay, right. in the United right. States. Right, it's both. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. May I ask a question? Because yeah. I know you did a lot of research on this. Uh, uh, not about a lot, but we've got Jason here. Enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll get the chief here. And my question is right, right to the same point that you just read, Denise. Mm -hmm. um, starting with the second sentence, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> out of the continental United States, including its territories, Hawaii and Alaska. Is that a de definition that is straight from one of these other documents? Because to me, it's a little ambiguous. It could be read and misinterpreted as that is the deployment to the U.S. territories or to Hawaii. And I know that sounds crazy. But that could be an inference that is made. I'd rather see that it read including, and starting at including, and then insert out of its territories, Hawaii and Alaska. Do you see what I'm saying? It's territories, Hawaii and I, I can see what you're saying. So you just have, but you still have to just define, is this how you want to leave it? So that they have to definitely be out of uh, Puerto Rico and out of mm -hmm. the United States and out of Hawaii and out of Alaska? Or do you want it to be active duty out of Massachusetts. I mean, I don't know. Is it, is it I, I was overseas? Thinking, I was thinking about this while you were saying that. But how about, how about we rephrase it the way it says it there, but also add or for emergency deployment in other states or territories of the U.S.? <laughs> silence here. The only way they're going to get deployed, deployment is the only way they're going to be deployed to active duty in the United States is if there's an we're emergency. We're at war. Well, yeah. well but not a, war, yeah, an emergency, war, right? Something horrible, yeah, <laughs> which we don't want to have. I mean, because <laughs> like Katrina, Katrina, yeah, exactly. You know, or but the, the, the point is, though, the way it's phrased in there, it ex specifically excludes within the U.S. deployment. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm trying to throw that out. And remember, it's military duty over 30 days to, you know, right. this would probably, this active duty is going to be over 30 because your, your standard military leave is up to 30. I think, so I think it, we should, like, include active duty within the United States, too, That's what I'm trying because to do. the only way they're going to get called to any type of active duty, if it's war or if it's an emergency. Well, they can, I think the issue in this case, and Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, the person volunteered. <laughs> uh, I love it. Going, what? <laughs> I, I just couldn't resist. Well, let me ask my question anyway. So in this case, like like when I think of active duty, call it active duty. That means that there's a guy that's involved in uh, the you know, Coast Guard or whatever, and he's called up to active duty. In this particular case that we're we're discussing, I think the firefighter volunteered to become active. I don't think he was called up. Is there a difference there? 
because no, they, they do get they do get called to volunteer. They do get I called up to volunteer for active duty. Active duty. So do you get called up or do you volunteers are different? Like, like National Guard members can be called up for active duty. Right. They don't have a choice. I don't want to speak on behalf of Mike. I, all I know is he was supposed to be deployed last last right. deployment and he got a deferment because of his uh, a newborn. Mm -hmm. So he was going. So my concern is the definition of what call of duty means, right? If call of duty means you're a National Guard person and, and the government says you've got to be called up, you've got to go, that's mm -hmm. call of duty. But if you're not called, the government isn't requiring it, and you volunteer to go. But they're calling to, but they're, all, they're, 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 they're calling them to volunteer for active duty because they need them. I, I think I That's understand what, I'm what you're saying. about the definition of what we're trying to do here. I understand what you're saying. Well, by, by that by that definition, anybody who signs up for the military is volunteering. Yeah, you volunteer for the right. service. Right. So, the, the OPS, so which wait, doesn't happen right so now. wait a minute. But My daughter just know, got an email a couple months ago, seeking volunteers for deployment yeah. overseas. Yes. Yeah. Right to serve, mm -hmm. like at a hospital. Okay. So I mean that. She would have been active duty then. If she, mm -hmm. if she agreed to go, she didn't have to, right? Right, she didn't have to, but she did volunteer to do it. So but is that a call to duty? The fact that she was yes. asked to is yes. that considered it's a call to duty? Yes, it's still a call to duty. Yes. Because if nobody ever did it, then what? Well, then the, but in the National Guard, when you sign for National Guard, then there you don't would have, have a choice. You're called no. up. You have yeah, to go. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but they have to. They, when they're asking for volunteers, they are signing up for active duty. They're still they're serving their country, and then oh, they're on active duty. And I don't think we no. should discriminate against I, that. I, this is I just want to know how you want to define this and make sure we understand what the definition means. If you're if your intention is that when they go anybody who volunteers even is active duty, then no. that's fine. It's, you got to it can be six months, right. Right. <laughs> three months. Well, we have to make a decision on that, uh, Mr. Chair. I think I said you something about maybe two or three paragraphs in this description. Okay. Uh, call to active duty for a domestic. Uh, which would come from the President of the United States? No. No. Not necessarily. No. Which no. 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 That's, a, that's how you're phrasing This, is clearly, okay, this is clearly defined. Okay, go ahead. If you, if you want to look at it, President of the United States and down to your unit, foreign or domestic. Okay. The definition is there. Okay. You'll save yourself two paragraphs on this. Guaranteed. Well, it's only one line, so we just have to decide if that's the line we want to use that other communities are using or not. That's the. Can I, can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. I'm trying, yeah. trying to understand. So, okay. so before I left, I was under the impression that in order to give benefits to any employee for this, that you had to accept no. Chapter 15. You don't have to. No, you can just make it a personnel rule. So it, it doesn't. You don't have to do that's this. That's right. An ordinance okay. by the town yeah, legislative can, body, and that's what Revere did, and that's okay. what many others. So that's not a requirement. That's why I just didn't yeah. know. That was what I was told before I left. That in order to do this, you had to, mm -hmm. to accept that you don't. No, you're essentially can, mirroring. Yeah. Chapter so 59. so if that appeases, you know, if that makes people whole, but we're doing it for the whole community, not just for one. We're not. We're not specific. We're not to using. Uh, we're not negotiating with union people on it. We're just gonna. We're trying to make a blanket policy. This also makes it easier to address issues like Councilor Carrasco commented about, well, can we try this for a year or whatever? Well, I'm not proposing that you try this for a year. Right. I'm proposing you keep it. But somewhere down the road, should we be a bankrupt community that has no money, then a future council could certainly say, we got to amend our, our personnel rules and regs and, and you know think about this. Or, it's, or yeah, we got a 1,000 people. They all need money. I don't know. I'm just saying, this is not a, you know, we didn't vote some a mass law, which could change. Now keep what right. happens. We saw that in that document, it said, here's the, here's the definition. Oh, wait a minute, but unless it was after this, then this is the definition. Then it's after, how do you follow that? Yeah. You know, unless we have Max taking minutes for us, we can't follow it. Right. <laughs> so the idea down. would be we set a policy based on what is good for us, including most, if not all, of what that law mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And we just put it in our rules and regs. And the union people are happy because they have their contract, which specifies what they can have, which can be no less than what we already give anyway. So they get theirs plus ours anyway. The base is already there. We already teach, give all our employees the same level. They just get more generally. So what I think I heard you say is you, Revere is doing just that. They mm -hmm. didn't accept the chapter. And this is an ordinance, right. It's it was considered an ordinance. And you as a legislative body can do in ordinances. We can do measures. We can do right. you know, regulations. So one of the, one of the concerns is, oh, again, and, and Versus a bylaw, right. versus a personal yeah. bylaw. And I, I, like, I, mean, I like this, if this is capable, I like this a lot better than what I thought. So 
So it's good because um, one of my big concerns was what what is the cost of this because it's very hard to understand what the cost is, right? Mm -hmm. And I look at it differently. We have a fireman, a fireman who is, you know, it's a twenty thousand dollar difference is one thing, but if it was a principal of school who volunteered to go, and now the salary difference is sixty grand, it could be a, or eighty grand, it could be a bigger number. Right. We we aren't going to restrict our that. Principal, our principal's contracted. No, uh, no contracted employees, and also you'll notice would that, that would that apply to school contracted employees if they like if they're uh, an employee of the town? Do yes, the principals yeah. get contracts? Yes. I believe so. Con you know, separate contract, you mean? I don't they know. have their own they contract, sort of contract like, well, we just did a, you know, we have contracted employees, you are contracted. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, they're, they just don't know principal. I, I they also eluded, sure. they also took okay. out seasonal in here, um, which was good because okay, yeah. seasonal was listed if you got, if you were active during your season, right. then the town would have to compensate during that seasonal period right. for the time you missed. Mm -hmm. However, Revere had chosen to, obviously, um, an, an employee eligible for payment under the section is C, uh, includes all permanent, part-time, and full-time employees. Seasonal and contract employees are not eligible for pay under the section. So that's very specific to no seasonal employees. And I think that's a good extra additional provision that's in there because and seasonal just, was come. Can I follow up? Denise, yeah. you have a else? Um, Dave did have a panel a little while ago, so. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, I attended the last meeting where this was brought up. And if the intent of council is to make the employee whole, mm -hmm. then where they're deployed is immaterial. Mm -hmm. Right, sure. Exactly. And uh, I agree with uh, Council of DePietro, uh, whether deployed foreign or domestic covers mm -hmm. it. Right, but, and we can but, change but the whole. But the purpose that you're, you're looking for is, is to make the employee whole. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, we're all, I think we're on the same page there. Mm -hmm. So that's a very simple line to be changed. Uh, okay. Uh, Do you have an extra panel? Uh, Whatever. Okay. So, Denise, I guess one more Once you, I guess, you can continue working on this and draft it up into something. After I think, you're I think done, tonight I want it done. Yeah, you can do it tonight? Okay. Do you want me to run this by Labor Council to see if this language is okay or you're just going to adopt it? I think we're going to adopt it. I think the intent of the council is to adopt it, and I don't see how the language could be any different than others. And yeah, I don't have a problem with the language. I think we we beat it a little last week. I think we came with a lot more research and clear as to what it could work. That's why I sent it through HR too to get her take on things. The only thing, so there were a couple things I just want to point out um, beyond this. So if you turn over G and H, now she took when when she put in when Kim put in, and that was one section I would have. Um, I didn't expect her to actually say, oh, this is how it's going to look. And I thought, okay, that's cool. Um, I appreciated the fact that she changed Southbridge and did all those things. One of these, um, they've got G&H has deployment for active duty service, shall not include active duty training purposes. That's listed in H. Technically, those G&H don't necessarily belong because in a very wide roundabout way, they're all covered here in our original military leave in terms of the training, even though I wish ours did say training up here because that's what it refers to as training, but they're not, because it says two weeks, which is the 17 day situation and all that. But she's, when this was adopted, when this was put into place, they just kept referring to USERA, USERA, okay. those terms that well, we all saw. Well, if it's open, we can always amend it to We could, but you know what, it's I don't want to go crazy on, we would need to then really delve into the, if, if this was fine prior when we redid this, I don't want to play with this. I mean. Okay. Our, com our, Sorry, our part was okay. to um, move forward with the compensation, mm -hmm. and so I'd, I'd rather not open up a can of worms with the rest of it. I mean, it's there, it all works, it's just a lot more wordy than it needs to be. Okay. So I think Revere well, I think handles we that here, and then they had already had a little military um, uh, training, like okay. a title, but okay. we don't have, we have this. Okay. So I would suggest that we don't, unless you see something there um, that is not, that doesn't make sense then then leave it but okay. it doesn't hurt but thank you uh for you i guess the one thing that jumps out without reading the entire document to the to the audience mm -hmm. i do just want to go back and state in response to mr smick's comment mm -hmm. there are ambiguities with, within this document that i want to have addressed but what's more if you read on the back side item number f our last conversation at general government Maybe I'm just not reading this correctly, but periods of deployed active duty shall be included in the computation of vacation, seniority, and longevity. No problem with seniority and longevity, mm -hmm. but it was stated here that our intention was to not allow vacation accruals. Right. But yet here, that reads to me as though we are accruing vacation right. or allowing for the accrual. Right. So again, 
all terms mm -hmm. it was brought forward as a proposal okay. so we can tweak it and change it and add or delete whatever we want I right. know from a fire department standpoint they, their accrual is forward I was asking that question because that came mm -hmm. up in discussion with you Jason wasn't it <coughs> wasn't, do we talk about the vacation well, what was well, it says, or, and the chief can speak to that, but I just said remembering our conversation so about that, approved. about how that right, works with yeah, it's statement. That's it's, with, uh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would leave that. Yeah. Part of yeah. when I got a man this, even E is a little confusing to me. Mm -hmm. um, while an employee is on active military duty, shall not accrue additional vacation or sick leave, but upon return from full time employment or upon full time employment, said employee shall be credited with all vacation leave and sick leave equivalent to that which he would have earned while on military duty. Right. Yeah, so that it is a back to that So it goes back to both. That's contradiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of contradictory, so I don't know how you want to manage that. Well, we can now, simplify the two yep. sections and you tell us what you um, want it to be. Uh, our and vacation time, time vacation follows the more of the traditional time. business model plan, which is the moment you start working, you start earning accrued time. So mm -hmm. it's on their anniversary date that they start accruing vacation time. Yeah. And right. sick, you know, sick time is still calendar. We'd like to move that. Mm -hmm. The same way, because the mo my opinion is the moment you start working here, you're earning benefits the moment you start working here. Right. Or anyway, so those should be given to you to work. So. Right, so I want to point out there is a line in there, in no event shall the vacation credit exceed one year's accrual. So you have right. to realize, too, that if they're accruing in the year and then they, they're deployed for a year or more, when they come back, they don't, it, didn't, it doesn't go a year anyway. So it just would be easier the question if it didn't exist that the moment okay. they leave, their benefits stop. Okay. And the moment they return, they get everything that they had up until they left. They don't lose anything. So they lose no seniority, they How lose no computation. That? that would be my Okay. So Thoughts on that? we're talking combining E and F. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Because so. Okay. So. even on your front paragraph, um, third paragraph down in the middle, for the purpose of determining benefits that are based on length of service, you'll be treated as if you've been continuously employed. So, where's on this on the on the front page? But yeah. this section here. Yep. That's uh, part of our. I know, but you but now that you're talking about you know modifying it, this mm -hmm. would be the time to correct some of the ambiguity language and make it clear as to what you want to do. Mm. Well, as I was just saying, Which I was having a hard time exactly. worrying about changing up what the town had already imposed yeah. previously. And then my, my last comment would be um, a number to A2, um, where you want to make the person whole. You describe the town of Selfridge's salary as defined as gross annual salary plus including any holiday pay. Mm -hmm. That's a benefit. So I don't know if you want to continue to offer that or not. But right. That would be something. And most most communities were offering that as because they would have counted that in their their usual annual pay situation. So, you know, you're asking them then to lose. That's above and beyond what right. the mass general law has. Just so you know. Okay. Mm, I'm not sure if that's like so, but all right. So, any comments? Nobody wants to weigh in. Karen, you want to weigh in on the benefits or anything? <laughs> Just curious. I mean, I, you know, you're a finance person. Is there anything you want to weigh in on in terms of how it's comp computed? Or? Is it a? Um, I know we had talked last time when we had the meeting yeah. mm -hmm. that we weren't that they weren't going to accrue any additional benefits while they were away. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're sticking with? Uh, yeah, that seems to be. We seem to seem to still be in agreement. I'm just uh, I'm looking to get a consensus out in the employment side of it too, not just the council well, side. Well, I would think it. that you would want to do the holiday because that would make them whole. Right. Yeah. That's kind of. I mean, if they had been here all year, they would have. That would be a normal pay to them. Would be to get their holiday. Right. Pay. Yeah. Was there or more because they was might there be working. Anything else in the benefits that you were talking about? Um, well, just the accrual. So if we don't accrue, but we comp, but we let them keep their holiday, that might be a nice gesture in some way. Yeah. Do you, do you know? What yeah, I don't see any issue with that. That's on the but that they don't Sorry. approve, but they don't lose anything that they had from before either. Right. 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 So right. we're just. She was suggesting that the retaining the holiday only because that was you know that's something you count on when you work here and you have your family yep. and you get well, your it would paycheck. Be six hours for every holiday. Yeah. That's what. Not only that, you might be working that holiday and getting even more money, so yeah. you can't get that option so when you're away. What's that? I said I would think so. In six well, hours. That would, that would make them whole. Sorry. Throwing <laughs> 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 stuff around here. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, okay. Thank you, Karen. Mark? The only other aspect of the chair, I'm just wondering, and uh, 
I certainly haven't been involved as you folks have I'm trying to put this together. I know it's a very tedious uh, uh, event, but uh, are there anything, uh, union wise or uh, accrued sick days, accrued this, so many hours for this, so many hours for that, that hasn't been taken into consideration? As did you say union wise? Or did you say, because we're not just talking wise, union. union wise, um, this is a firefighter, I mean, anyone that's employed by the town. If, are there if we cover all days of the contractual obligations that we have, if, if you adopted this with some minor adjustments, this would cover all the contract language that we have. So, because we have to remember, it's an overall policy for all employees, not just union or contract, or well, actually, it's not the contract. Well, uh, this right. meeting is all, all about trying to yeah, clear it. Your eyes yeah. Your yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that's right. what it If we're going to if we're going to yeah. obligate ourselves to pay, we need to know that we're doing it very methodically. Okay. All right, so you're still, all right, so we need to work on paragraph three. You still think in the old document, we work on paragraph three. Um, no benefits besides the, uh, they don't lose what they've already, all seniority and. Um, Longevity. Pardon me? Longevity. Longevity, seniority, and accrued vacation and sick time are yeah. all, mm -hmm. that all remain. Yep. And, um, so just for clarification, does that mean that if you have 10 years and then you get called off, you've got 10 years of service to the town and you get called off, you stay out a year, you do, you come back as 10 years service? Is that what yeah, I longevity, I think, I think you become a, if you were there 10 and you go for a year, aren't you at 11 at that point? Because you didn't that's lose longevity. Right. That's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. I would think we're, exactly we're looking at here. You're right. not losing any, any time. You're, you're not, not losing anything. You're not losing but, anything. But the point, the point is, like we're not. We're trying to figure out. You're not. You're also not gaining it either. Because that's, that's the question. That's yeah. what I'm trying well, to, that's he's what I'm trying keeping, to figure out what's if, going on here. If, well, if he left at 10 years and he comes exactly. back after 11, he he has 11 years, but he's not accruing the vacation. But time. he doesn't have the extra vacation time for you another just year. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Take extra pay raise for another vacation. year. Or you could that's what I'm trying to understand. Just take out the word vacation. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Along the way, they would still be accruing seniority and longevity benefits which would kind of clean it up a little bit so it would be easier to work with okay. so if the vacation we, accrual would, would stop right so periods of deployment active duty shall be included in computation of seniority and longevity benefits yeah. Yeah. okay That's all right. right but we decided e e was uh, while on duty, you shall not accrue vacation or sick time, additional vacation or sick time, that was fine. But upon return to full employment, there's the credit thing, so we don't want to do that. We don't want to credit them additional, right? Is that what we're saying? Right. Those, those are contradictory. I, right, they're contradictory. I'm just right. making sure we're clear because I'm crossing off. Shall be granted all time earned prior to being deployed. So it's just that one sentence in, in E. Shall not accrue vacation, additional. Additional, uh, or additional, additional vacation or sick. And that's a, what okay, so then we don't need anything else. So that just right. one line could be added to the uh, okay. Yeah, so basically, if I, if I understand what combine we're saying, them. then here E and F would be would combine to one and say an employee while on active military duty shall not accrue additional vacation or sick leave, mm -hmm. um, but periods of deployed active duty shall be included in computation of seniority and longevity benefits. Right. Is that what we're? That's yeah, we can we can do it as one. That's what we're saying. Even a period, and just we don't say but we just right. put periods okay. up. It's just two okay. statements together. That's fine. And we, I don't and think we, we ever, I don't think we ever came to a final conclusion for the section for section B, of what okay. the way we wanted to phrase that. Call to call to active duty is defined as being deployed for military duty for a minimum. It, do we want a minimum period? I would put a minimum of like six eighteen months. months. Oh no, no minimum. 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 <laughs> I would put six a maximum months. is not a bad idea, too, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. The only well, issue I have with that, if you don't mind me, because I think we're on the same page, I don't want to set a minimum of nine months. That's, yeah. I mean, my brother's deployed for three and six months at a time, and yeah. I know guardists and reservists do the same thing. Okay. So, so Fox, I would say... I don't think we should put a minimum on it, because... I, I'd rather usually, see no minimum as yeah, well. Yeah, because usually it is like three months. If you're going to get deployed, you're going to get deployed three, six, nine... Yeah. 12, 18. 12, 18, 24. Well, I don't even think you're going to go 24. Okay. Okay, so if they get called up for an emergency in country that's 45 days, they don't get <coughs> anything between, or they, they're going to get, there's no minimum or there's no minimum. So I want to put a minimum on it because you're being called to duty to serve your country, domestic or foreign. Mm -hmm. I think as a matter, if I can, as a matter okay. of policy, I think that's perfectly fair and adequate. Mm -hmm. 
is to eliminate the requirement for a minimum period. You know, Again, you know what? The whole town is not going to get called on active duty at no, once. It might be either. one or two, maybe what, two or three times out of five years or something. It's not like it, it happens happen every week. Right. All right, so you don't go with the minimum. We take off minimum, and we uh, and what about the uh, uh, as far as anywhere? Um, how was that statement again for location? Yeah, I don't foreign know. Foreign or domestic? What month yeah, I think that? I think that's fair too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just say foreign or domestic. Either, so. Being deployed for military mm -hmm. duty, foreign or domestic, or or insert foreign or domestic ahead of military. Right, that's what yeah, yeah foreign or domestic. That makes sense. Yeah. And so there we go. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter about anything else. That's pretty short, short and sweet. Does that make everybody? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I just want to make sure we're clear on A, you still leave not to exceed one year, or are you going to look at oh, yeah. 18, 18 months, months, two years? I, I don't know what you want to do. I think you should. The person can't just go and tell the military, yes, I only want to depl be deployed for nine months, because you know what? They're going to come back at you, and they're going to say, <laughs> Sorry, you're going to stay. <laughs> Honest to God, they're going to oh, do I, I that. Know. So, I mean, I don't yeah. think there should be anything on that. Yeah, but what if somebody Look keeps re-upping for you? What if they say, you know, I kind of like it in here, and I'm getting <coughs> extra money from the town anyway for three, five years. I mean, you know, what if they did that? Exactly. But there's that a limit in the military, <laughs> right? There's a limit uh, in the military. There are people who I think lifers. it needs to be, re you know, because we can't be <laughs> well, left the lifers forever. Well, the are usually the people who are active duty. They are, that's true. Period. I think as a matter of compromise, since this is an initial policy, Councilor Carrasco was adamant about one year. I'm more than willing to support that the way that st statement's written, it's a start. If we need to amend it in the future, we could. But I think, I think 18 is, is, is legitimate. I wouldn't keep it out of year. I would go, if we're going to do, I I've don't seen like. 18 month deployments. I would do 18 month, but I wouldn't put it. I, I don't even like putting that maximum on there because of. Because let's face it, if somebody really, if we really had that issue and you brought it back up and, you know, the, the HR came to us or somebody, you know, the Chief Frank, anybody, Chief, uh, Chief Woodson came to us, anybody came to us and said, look, our guy's gone and he's still stuck and we're at war. And, you know, I wouldn't, I, mean, I wouldn't. We probably would just. Yeah, I, I wouldn't um, or her be a negative person. We probably would. We probably would. Yeah. Or somebody probably would. But, may, well, maybe, but I can only speak for myself. Maybe, maybe doing that as a, a year or 18 months as a review, just so we know what's happening, is not a bad idea. You know what? If we put 18 months or it. or extension, if necessary, with proper documentation that's or something way, like that's that. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. To be reviewed way. after one year or reviewed after? After 18 months with proper documentation. So um, is that true, though? You know, it is true. It, no, well, let me Trust finish me. my comment. It, it, then if somebody decides that they want to re-up for another two years, they can give you a proper review and you're gonna you're gonna allow it for as long as however you know because you can keep going on as long as you want right so you I can keep re up and for the military sure but i don't think you can re up as for an active at yeah. for deployments right. all the time like you have to have a break they have to give you a break somewhere so again it goes back to the question of what is exactly active duty if you have to be fighting in a war you're just active in the military i don't i don't know I just don't know what active duty means. Deploy is deploy. Deploy is different than active sentence. duty. I don't, right. I don't first know. sentence clarifies that without getting too detailed. You can refer back to the US ERA. <coughs> if you are absent from work because you are serving in the US uniform services in accordance with blah, 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 that's adequate for the purposes yeah. of this right. policy. Yeah. When you, got, when you have active Which duty. Means that that's everything, right? Under that definition, that means that as long as you're working, you're in the military, you get paid. That, that's what that that's a very broad sentence right so that means you can keep re-upping and get paid mm -hmm. from the difference between your pay for 10 years and there's no sure. limit no there's a de deployment no, papers you're are talking about just... deployment we're not talking about re-upping for the military and when a person's active duty they're not going to have a full-time job in the town of southbridge that's true. they're going to be stationed right. on on base or off base somewhere mm -hmm. I got in Missouri, out in Kansas, out in Hawaii, somewhere. So it has a definite set right. time. Now you're talking about the National Guard or the Reserves or something like that. Then when you say active duty, that's when they're deployed for active duty and they get active duty military pay and they're not constantly here at home. They're, they're off doing the military stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. Right, active duty benefits and active duty pay are way different than... See, a reservist or a National Guardsman is not active duty until they get deployed, but right. they're still serving right. the United States. Mm -hmm.
Right. <laughs> 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 yes, love it. <laughs> I know, I got the notification on All my right. cell phone. <laughs> Shall we leave it the way it is in terms of... I think so, yes. No. Because uh, here's what's really nice about this document. If it turns out to be a real issue... Some council needs to come in and adjust. Can we put can we put documentation though, um, unless documented? Um, to well, they extend. have to provide them. But can we like after that one year, if you're not okay. going to change it to 18 months or whatever, can we just put um, upon documentation extended if necessary or something like that? Put something yeah, can, in there. Yeah, can be extended if necessary by vote, with, by vote of with council. proper documentation. With pro yeah. Okay. Yeah, that I would be. That. I, I mean, that council. it could be by vote of council. By vote of council. You could say it could be extended by vote of council. Well, that way you yeah. take it up individually. I don't know if that's legal, but I mean, it makes sense. Well, no, you're just, you're, well, you're extending the benefit to them. You're looking at it. Because right now we're going to vote to say it's one year. Look, when you, go to, council, when you go to jury duty, duty you need to show that you pay for one you, person. You, not you the other. on jury. Okay, so I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I don't know. I don't know. That would be gross. Right. Can't be subjective like that either. Right. right. So what do you want to do? No, put documentation. Just like I said. With, the, with Look, extensions. When for, you when for, you're when for you're at a full time job and you have to serve jury duty and you say I have to serve jury duty and you get usually get paid that whatever that difference is, you have to show documentation. So right. why can't we show documentation for this? Well, if I, I might mean, say they're, they're going to have to show documentation on pay anyway because that's how we do their paychecks. I mean, they're going to have to show documentation. They would to have to, but they wouldn't show it. They sure. would show it to like right. So, yeah, I mean, she not would, us. Whoever's she'd paying to us. the checks is going to know whether they're still active or not because they're going to they're going to be doing a, a balance between because their pay goes up in the military, then our, our portion goes down. I'm just saying, but with documentation is fine. We can add the words. You just tell us what it's to say. I don't think it should say anything <laughs> to be honest with you but okay <laughs> um to extend it with documentation just like um what what did you say Gus? oh i said um, can be extended by council well i don't think no no no, 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 no not I, council. I, I think that would can be extended um upon documentation if subject, can be extended yeah, subject, subject to subject to, to documentation extension subject to documentation yeah that sounds good yeah that's fine one documentation year. of what the longer documentation the longer of deployment than you than you know what, what you thought originally. if they're serving longer then god bless them because they're now away from their families too okay no, i'm not even debating it but i'm just saying that okay. the documentation i guess is is them documenting that they've been deployed Extensions longer than a year limited right? I mean, subject to documentation. well the military would send us some probably send us something saying oh but we're, we're keeping okay. it. Okay, let's make a decision here. They don't send it to us. After send this, it let's down. keep going. And they have to. They, they have to send it to us. Yeah. It's, all, it's upon them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's getting late. Make up your mind. Yeah, we, we are way over center. Okay, so make up your mind. So, Gus, my, my hand was up and when you recognized right, me. Yeah, <laughs> stood down. I need help, although I have five years of college and a bachelor's degree. I'm a little tired. And we're Chief DeFranza read statement uh, out of paragraph or um, subsection A mm -hmm. is that word rem or ren because i don't know the difference where is it remuneration remuneration uh, remuneration yeah. how it's supposed to read it, that is a real word that's the word that came exactly unless you typed it wrong yeah, yeah, yeah i just didn't right. want to pull out my yeah. phone and it looks right i'll google it yeah okay. just google it, it. Remuneration. And I don't remember it when we discussed it last time. Oh, man, Thanks. I think they canceled school for a Why don't we just get rid of that and just say ordinary, ordinary base pay in the stuff. town of Southbridge and get rid of the word verbiage anyway? That's what it means. So, <laughs> that word must have something to do with benefits. Maybe there is no base. Rules. Maybe some people are, you know, it's, our, it's not, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why they got it in there. It's just a nice word. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, so, question. so where are we as far as language here? I think in the end we'll we'll end up reading it. You know, for now we'll make adjustments, and if you want that to go to council, you just say whether you want it to go to council, we'll make the adjustments, and give it to everybody prior to the meeting, and if they want it, we work on it. If we don't, we postpone it. So until we wanna, it's clear. What, do we, what do we want to do here, guys? Do we want to? The chief's got his hand up. In the sorry, go ahead. Um, at the end, whatever language you decide, are we still talking about <coughs> retroing this back? Right. That was the other <coughs> language. Thank right. you for bringing that up. I knew that was because I wanted it to be on here, right. and we didn't do it. So, right. the, in the motion, it would be. To recommend, um, to accept, to, uh, the motion would be something like, if somebody wants it, recommend council vote to amend the Town of Southbridge non-collective bargaining units, employees, personnel, rules, and regulations to include new language as proposed regarding active, active duty status. 
<laughs> retroactive to January 1st or whatever. Yeah, so we would throw the retroactive in. Yeah, I don't remember that. Sorry, I meant to, so something like that. So so guess, guess the the and then we would, we would have this written up. For so, performed. so I guess the question for you guys here, for the subcommittee is, is this ready actually to, to go up to council now? Do we want a motion to send design. a motion up to council with basically what she was just saying? <laughs> or, or does this need more work? It's up to you guys. I think, if I may, as we've said in the past, it would be awfully nice to see a final document. Mm -hmm. Here, I don't think we're changing anything substantial on the first page except for the el elimination of some verbiage down under part b mm -hmm. yeah part so b i don't have a, change, right? i don't have an issue with the front and i know there were some adjustments on the back side yeah e and f are basically going to be combined the first sentence of e the yeah. first sentence of e, e and the sentence of f basically. right so mm -hmm. without what vacation right end of the day i'd still like to see it in its final form but we'll have that opportunity at council so i could go either way on this i would prefer to see it mm -hmm. but we've had two meetings on this already and right. i'd like progress so because so, we, so we have so somebody then, deployed who's thinking so then, about this and so if it's going to be retroactive anyway so right. then so so then I would accept a motion then to say that we will we will do this subject to seeing um, final a final text of the proposal before the next house meeting. Mm, it would be my intent to redo it and have it in your, have it to you by you know, through the snowstorm tomorrow night. You know, like as yeah. an email or something, but okay. in your packet. That's not, that's, that's okay. what I figured. Yeah. So. But the question is whether you want to recommend that we amend the bylaws to reflect the language that we've discussed tonight. You know what I'm saying? You got to, mm -hmm. what you, is that what you're proposing to do? Well, then? no, I wanted to so go back to that too, actually. Saying, Thank yeah, you for reminding okay. me, because you were referred to a uh, policy document or personnel rules and regs or something. Right, because that's where it falls. That's where it comes if that's where it's going to go, let's put that into the verbiage as well, right? right? Okay, that's why that I said it said, yeah. So, so we don't have that language, and I'd have to where? develop it. That, it's this military section, it's military oh, leave. It's already in there. This is, can pull that out. Okay. And this is our entire document. Um, and that's why she put it in where she, I didn't, I gave her this and said, what do you think? And next thing you know, it came back as, how does this look? This is how it would be. Okay. And I said, oh, okay, that's what our paragraph is? Yeah. But I have the, so it's in here. So, I'll be, you know, whatever you guys want to do, I'll be happy to get it to you through the snow day, so I'll be typing. Right. Now, this is going to be quiet to reread it, right? No, it's not a bylaw. The personnel, the personnel regs. regs are not bylaws. They're just regs. We don't have it as a personnel bylaw. Okay. There's ordinances. I call it an ordinance, like some towns do, or there's personnel bylaws, if you call it that. Uh, there's well, ordinances. Ordinances, ordinances, bylaws. ordinances, ordinances bylaws. bylaws. Ordinances bylaws. Okay. Yeah. Right. We, yeah, measure. I don't know. Last time we voted on this, we didn't do it three times. It's a council. It doesn't say it's a bylaw by any means. So. That it's a measure. It's a measure. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, and if you don't like what comes to you in your packet, certainly at the, we can put it on the agenda. If you don't like it, it can be postponed to do whatever you say to do until the next meeting, which is the 26th, right. so. Well, we want to get it right. Exactly. So. So, yeah. what's the pleasure of the committee? Okay. Move to recommend council, uh, move to recommend council acceptance of the proposed version of military leave policy um, <coughs> subject to amendments. Whatever Denny said. Second. Based on, based on the discussion yeah, of the committee here? Can I? Okay. Second. Okay. And I will. I'm not going to be happy. Temperature over here is hot. hot. It's, it's warm now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no clue. It's going to be as many okay. soon. Okay. All right. So we do accept it as revised um, based on. Um, revised monthly leave policy based on the discussion that we've had here tonight? Sure. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where we stand here. Okay. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are you on general right. talking? Oh, is this general? Yes! Yeah, we're so <laughs> sorry. It's not a big was that why you asked? No, she, she said I, I'm thinking we're going to need to postpone. It was, or immediately yes. following. Okay, given the fact that it's already 7.30 and we're well over DPW start time, um, I'm suggesting we postpone 6 and 7. I, I second that motion. Okay. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. Okay. How about um, number five? Why don't we do oh. council rules and regulations entirely together? 
we, that including the yeah, six yeah, eggs. Yeah, I can post one to number five. But it's, not, it's not a crucial emergency. So. Okay. okay, we'll do five, six, and seven. I'll take a quick a quick um, moment to do any new business that you want to bring up. Any, anything well, let's forward. post you seven. But so, anything quick? This. Nothing for me. It was going to be the best, but we already, <laughs> already did that. Okay. Okay, I only had one, I actually only had one question. Um, and uh, I actually, I think, well, actually, I can, I'll bring that up. I'll bring that from the PW, actually. So, because I can go there too. So. Okay, so uh, a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Motion, I'll take you a second. All in favor? Good. Okay. DPW, it's all yours.